chess class. I'm Coach Anthea. I teach chess at Glendale Chess Academy, uh, uh, American Chess Academy located in Glendale, and, and after school programs um, around the town, around the city. And so this is an intermediate class, so I won't be showing you how the pieces move because you already know that. So uh, I want to start off with um, the base, the most basic strategy of when you when you when you open the game, how should you move? So the number one thing I want you to know is that the first thing you have to do is you have to try to control the center. So this pawn, see, controls these two squares here because it can capture this way or this way. But in, in addition to controlling the center, I'm also letting out other pieces. So this, this piece now can, can maybe post here, it can post here, and also the queen can get out. So I'm letting two pieces out. It's extremely important when you're playing a chess game to develop your pieces. You cannot afford to let your army sit on the back rank. Your army is your fighting, that's your fighting, these are your fighting tools. And by the way, not your pawns. It's you fight with your pieces, not with your pawns. Think of your pawns as bricks and you're building something with them. You're building a structure around which your pieces will move. So now a good move for black in response is just simply to make the same move. But there are other things he can do and some are good and some aren't. So I'll show you some good moves, okay? Some good moves, this is one. Uh, this is this is okay to do this because you're getting out a piece you're bringing a piece out so as long as you're bringing a piece out you're doing something um, this is even okay it offers to trade it's okay because you can recapture with your queen so you're not losing anything and also you're allowing your bishop to come out so that's fine and so let's look at some bad options now for black. So some bad options involve things like, you know, just pushing your side pawns, um, moving your knight to the edge of the board, things like that. Those are not good options. So we'll stick with good options. So I'm gonna make the best move. This is technically the best move. Now the next best thing for white to do is to start bringing out a piece. He's, he's already let some, some pieces out. So now he wants to start bringing out pieces. In general, we like to attack and develop. So here I'm a, I am attacking this pawn with my knight and I'm also developing, I'm bringing something out. But now see black has to respond because let's say black ignores it and just brings out a bishop or something. Then he's gonna lose this pawn. So he cannot ignore me. So what are some ways that he can defend? Well, we wanna defend in a way that brings pieces out or lets pieces out. So here are some good ways to defend. One, bring this knight out and, and that way you are also bringing pieces out and you're defending. Two, this is, this is not as good as bringing out the knight, but it's acceptable. It's called the Philidor opening and it's acceptable. It's just passive. It's passive because it does not bring out a piece and it blocks in the dark squared bishop because now the dark squared bishop cannot, cannot go very far. But there are some really terrible ways to defend this pawn. This is the worst. I'm just gonna show you what happens. I'm not gonna go into detail, but I'm just gonna show you what happens. If your opponent knows what they're doing, they sacrifice their knight, pawn takes knight, queen comes over, check. Now he can either block the check and then check. And I'm also attacking the rook. So if he does this move, he loses, he could potentially lose his rook. If he gets out of check this way, then he gets checkmated very quickly. And
and you can see, I'm not going to go over the whole thing, but you can see the king is in big trouble. I'm going to be bringing out this bishop here by, by developing this pawn. So that's, as you can see, just try to remember, do not defend that pawn with the pawn on F7. By the way, the names of the squares are, you can find, if, if any of you have played Battleship, the way that you tell the name of the square that it's on is F7, just like Battleship. So this pawn that we don't want you to defend with is called F7 pawn. Now, so what other ways? This is, this is not good. Why? Because <clears throat> this bishop needs to get out. Now, by bringing the bishop and defending with the bishop, while it does defend the knight, it blocks in this guy. We don't want to block in other pieces. So now, if I'm sitting here, that means I'm blocking the pawn, which means the pawn cannot move out, which means this bishop cannot come out. So don't defend with the bishop. Now, here's another no-no. Don't defend with the queen. Why? Because the queen is your most powerful piece, and you do not want your queen to be under assault constantly from the other pieces, which is exactly what happens when you bring her out too early. I'll show you an example. Let's say I come here and here, and now look, I'm already harassing this queen because the bishop is protected by the knight. So the queen now has to run again. And remember, when you're bringing your pieces out, you want to get as many pieces out as you can. And if you have to run away all the time with, your, with one of your pieces, then you're not able to get other pieces out. See, I'm attacking, then I come here, then I'll probably attack again. But already you've made me move twice with my queen. So we don't want to defend with the queen. It's too powerful. Um, just to, uh, in case you, in case you're not aware, I know you may be intermediate, but just in case you're not aware, the relative piece values, you have to keep that in mind. So for example, why do you have to protect the queen? Why can't you just trade the queen for the bishop? Because of the relative piece value. So the queen is worth nine pawns, right? But the bishop and the knight are both only worth three pawns. And the rook is worth five. So if you had a queen here and I were to bring this out and attack you, you would have to move it. You do not want to trade it because then you're losing nine pawns and only getting three pawns for it. And those pieces relative value is based on their strength. And I'll show you some stuff about the strength of the pieces later. But for now, just re remember this is nine, three, three, five okay so we're gonna make the best move we'll go here now what's the next best thing for me to do should i should i move this again no why because i want to get as many of these pieces out as i possibly can so there's different options i can do the best one is probably to bring out the bishop why because i want to get castled now, if you're intermediate, you should probably know what castling is already. But let me just show you in case you forgot. I'm just going to make a move for black here. Castling is when you move your king over two squares and your rook jumps over your king. So hopefully, if you already are an intermediate, you know that's how to castle. Now, if you castle on the queen side, your king will land up on the C file, the C square here instead of this one. So it's going to be further from the corner. Um, and hopefully, if you're intermediate, you already know, but I'll just review really quick. The three times you cannot castle. One, you cannot castle if your king is under attack or what we call in check. So for example, if there was a queen here checking my king, means attacking, I cannot castle to get out of check. Secondly, let's say this was a dark squared bishop instead of a light squared bishop. Then I could not castle because you cannot go through check. So here I'm not in check from the bishop, but if I go in slow motion, you can see that I passed through check. That's not legal either. So you cannot castle if your king is in check 
or if you're going to move through check. The third time you cannot castle is if your king or the rook that you'd like to castle with has already moved. And even if it moves back to the original square, you still can't castle anymore. Okay, so in this position, we can castle. Now, why do we castle? We castle because number one, we want the king to get into the corner. Remember, where's all the action taking place? The center. So we want the king as far away from the center as possible because the king is what your opponent wants to get. That's the most important piece. Secondly, we castle to connect the rooks. Rooks like to be together. They're like teenagers. Teenagers like to hang out together and go to the mall. So that's how rooks are. They like their friends and they like to be together. So ideally, we're going to want to get these guys every move, bring out a piece. Then keep trying to get my pieces out, see? Then bring out another one, right? And now my rooks are happy because they're, they're friends again and they hang out together and they like to occupy files. So let's say this were to open up at some point, perhaps, we would wanna place the rook where it has the maximum power on an open file. Okay, now that is a brief description of what you should be doing during the first few moves of your game. You should be getting the pieces out opening up pathways for the pieces. For example, you, this is fine. This would not be fine because you're opening the pathway for the queen. We don't want to bring the queen out early. This is also a fine opening move because you're bringing out pieces. Okay, now, <clears throat> no chess lesson is complete without a quick review of the four move checkmate and the fool's mate. So let's look first at the fool's mate. The fool's mate is what happens when someone almost tries to get checkmated. This is a checkmate because see the knight cannot block because it only moves in these letter L's and the bishop cannot block because it only goes diagonal and pawns cannot move backwards. Remember that pawns cannot move backwards, very important. And of course the rook is stuck because he's just straight and the, the king cannot escape. So if, if this were not here, we could escape and we'd be fine. The only bad thing is we wouldn't be able to castle. But this is a, a called a fool's mate. It's the shortest checkmate possible. Okay, now, but that checkmate only happens if your opponent makes two really bad moves in a row and they have to be the exact right bad moves, right? So that's not likely to happen. But here's the four move checkmate, which lots of kids like to do to each other, and which when I was a kid was my favorite thing to do. Okay, so the way we do the four move checkmate is first we take the bishop out. We can do it in, in, any, in a different order if we want, but the way I always like to do it was this way, because the other possible way to open is this move, and that violates the principle, don't move uh, the queen out too early. So that's why I prefer this move. So we're attacking the pawn, and that way, if he makes a move like this, this we can never do it now. Now my four move checkmate cannot be done because I'll get it captured. And that's fine, I can just go on with my game and make a decent second move. But let's say he makes a, a really bad move like that. Okay, so now I come over here with my queen. Now you can see that my queen and my, and my bishop are lining up on this square here. So it's not hard to defend, but if you don't pay attention, if you make some random move, then here's what the checkmate will look like. The king cannot get out. He can't go here because he still gets captured. Nothing can capture the queen. If the bishop were not there, then the king would be able to capture the queen. So that's why we put the bishop here on the C4 square first. 
Now, there are plenty of ways to stop it. And one of the assignments I give my students is to practice playing somebody. Usually I'm able to do this because I teach kids and they're there together. But what you want to do is you want to pair up with somebody else and one of you decides to try to do the four move checkmate to the other one and the other one tries to figure out how to stop it. And I like for them to figure it out themselves before I start explaining. Because if you have the questions yourself, you're more likely to think logically and come up with ideas, which is what you want to do in chess. Okay, so let's see, how long have I been talking for about? Uh, well, this sounds a good, a good place to stop if you want, Mandia. And, um, and then whatever else you want, we can continue for the other sessions. So maybe like I could stop here. Well, I, 